One of the most important things to remember when you're going to test some fragrance oil is to make sure that you're organised up front. So you could either just test a new fragrance oil on the end of making a batch of soap that you're already making or perhaps you could do a special testing as I'm going to do here. And as you can see what I've done is I've already made up some batter that I'm going to use for testing my fragrance oils and I've worked out how much I need to test all of these little samples and I've ordered all these little samples in um, just so I can just have a look at how they're reacting and maybe add some new fragrance oils through to my collection. Now organisation up front is massively key so do make sure that you get all your little fragrance oils and set yourself up a little pot or something that you're going to put your sample in. Now these little pots that I use are just little sauce pots that I've bought and I think they're sort of um, 60 grams sauce pots. Uh, now I must admit I'm not a massive fan of single use plastics. I did buy these to do my fragrance testing but these are little pots I've had for quite a long time and I've used them time and time and time again so although they are plastic I have got an awful lot of use of them. Also what you see is just make sure that you name the pots. Now make sure you know what you're going to be putting each in each one because it's very easy to get those fragrances muddled up and then you don't know which was which that you're actually dealing with. And then another thing that I think is really important is make sure you can open your fragrance oil bottles. Um, you'll be surprised sometimes that you might be in the middle of trying to um, pour out some fragrance oil into something and then suddenly you're really frustrated that you've got your gloves on and you're trying to open a fragrance oil and you just cannot get the thing to open. So just loosen all those lids off before you actually start. So we've got all our little pots and we've got all our fragrance oils. Next you need to do some recording. There's no point doing all this testing unless you record what it is that you're actually testing. I literally just draw out a very simple little schedule. Certainly you can transfer this onto some groovy old spreadsheet a little bit later on. But remember what you're doing at the moment is you're just trying to record what's happening as you're going through your testing. And I'm sure you know when you deal with soap, sometimes things can happen pretty quickly. And if you've got some sort of snazzy old spreadsheet that you're trying to type into, you don't want to keep going back on and off your computer with sort of soapy hands and that sort of thing. So this just basic pad that I'm using is perfect. Let's have a look at these three columns. I tend to use sort of a three column format because that's what works for me. And you need to set it up however it works for you. My one, two, three here, what they indicate to me is one would be the approximate time that it takes for that soap to get to a nice light trace. Two would be when I would consider it has got to sort of like a medium type trace. So the sort of thing that would be good for maybe a hanger swirl, that type of thing. And then three is the point where I feel that it's got to, I really wouldn't want to be using it anymore. So the sort of point where it won't pour, that's normally my sort of category. If I can pour something, I can still work with it. If I've got to the point where I can't pour it and I'm sort of scooping it or plopping it or whatever then to me that's gone past the point that I really want to wait with, work with that fragrance anymore. So those are my three columns. I also then at the end have a little column for notes so that would include things like whether the fragrance oil riced those types of things. Okay so I'm all set up now and I've got everything sorted so I'm literally just going to go through and now deal with my fragrance oils. Now my little tubs as I said are um, 60 grams each so therefore I've calculated how many oils and how much batter I need to make up to fill these up and I'm just getting ready now so that I can just pour the batter in. I've already made up my soap batter and I've literally mixed it up just to emulsion because what I want to do is I want to see what the fragrance oil does and how it actually reacts with that soap batter. Okay, so you can see I've got my nice emulsified batter. It's not really a trace or anything. It's still lovely and loose. And I'm going to be very careful about how I measure my batter out. It's really important to make sure you get the right amount of fragrance oil in. I test all of my fragrance oils at 5%. I tend not to buy any fragrance oils I can't use at that rate. 
you know, a lot of them you can use at a higher rate, but I tend not to buy fragrance oils that are below that. And even if a fragrance oil can be used at a higher rate, I just find it's much easier for my purposes to just do every single sample exactly the same way. Then I haven't got to then keep track of, oh, I did this one at 6% and this one at 9%. And it gives me a good indication as well when I'm then smelling them a little bit later on to look at that scent retention. So as you can see here, all I'm literally doing is as accurately as I possibly can. And I've got a really detailed scale here. It does go down into nice small increments. And I'm just literally going through and weighing out my batter. Trying to be nice and efficient. I do actually have quite a nice slow trace recipe here. I will find with my soap batter that I can leave my soap batter um, without any extras in it, like fragrance or anything. And it will sit for a good 40, 45 minutes and nothing horrible will have happened to it. So I'm quite confident that the difference between me pouring out pot one and pot 10 or however many I've got there isn't gonna make much of a difference. So now all my pots are measured out, I just need to make sure I'm gonna put, again, an accurate amount of fragrance oil into each pot. So you can see here, I'm just going through and just calculating for my pots that I've got my 60 grams, and now that's my 60 grams. Now that times by 0.72 is my percentage of oils that I've actually got in that 60 grams of batter. And I've times that by my 5% to say that I want to put two grams of fragrance oil into each one. And that's the standard rate that I'll use when I'm testing. Okay, so now I know that, I can now go to each fragrance oil item and I put them on my, that little scale there is like my really, really detailed scale. It does like up to 0 0.01 of a gram. So I do have to be as accurate as I possibly can, putting in that 2.1 grams of fragrance oil. So in it goes. And I'm just literally going to repeat that and pop that through in every single little pot. I do tend to sort of squidge out the little pipette as well as I possibly can and give it a little bit of a rinse just so I'm making sure I'm not transferring fragrance oils. Um, but I'm not gonna get too massively worried. You know, I'm not gonna try and dry it between every single one or anything. So now we're all weighed, now's the time to start making sure that we're mixing everything in and notice the reaction of the fragrance oil with the batter. Now I must admit, I typically, when I do my fragrance oil testings, I tend not to do as many of this at a time. I quite like and do like, like doing um, you know, maybe four or five at one go. Okay, but I've done a few more than normal here. So as you can see, all I'm literally doing is I'm just now mixing in my fragrance oil and as I'm going through I'm obviously taking a note in my head about anything that I notice. So all of those fragrance oils that just seem to be mixing in nicely, nothing particularly weird happening, that's fine I'm just going to ignore them and put them back down. If I come across anything that maybe rices or seems to be instantly seizing up then that's when I'm going to go and grab my pad and I'm going to note down what's happening. Now everything's all nicely mixed in, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna set myself a timer because it's really important for me to think about, you know, how long it took something to meet, you know, each of those three stages. So therefore I can consider that when maybe I'm gonna build it into a recipe. So I'm just gonna now go through each little pot and I'm gonna have a look at what's going on with them. And what I'm looking for is to see if I've got what sort of trace I've got. Has anything got to sort of like um, a light trace, medium trace or anything. But also as well, I'm gonna really look for anything like ricing um, that may be happening. I'm not worried about scent at the moment because we'll look at that after the saponification stage. Okay, so as literally as so I'll go through. On um, this next one, I'm pretty sure that as I go through, um, it has starting to thicken up just a little bit. So therefore, obviously I'm comparing the different thicknesses. Look, you can see that one. Look, it's already a little bit thicker than the first one. So what I would do is I would go to my pad 
and I will actually note that down, that that's maybe got to a level one within whatever the time was at this point, so within a minute. Now my next fragrance oil, let's have a look. Uh-oh, <laughs> this good old crisp water, look, you can see there, literally within a minute, it's it's gone all thick and blobby. I'm not sure whether that's rising, whether it's just that it's gone really thick without being stirred, but certainly <laughs> that's something that I'm really not going to want to be working with. I'm going to do any sort of detailed design or anything. So yeah, that certainly looks like some sort of rising or something going on in there. So again, I'm going to go through and just write that down. And that's what I'm just going to carry on doing as I go through with each of these items. Okay, so you can see I've taken that one straight to number three within a minute, and I've also said that I think that one rises. So what I now do is I just carry on going through each one and rotating time and time again. As soon as a little pot has got to level three, I will then clip a little lid on it and then put it to the side and it goes out of the rotation. So therefore you'll see that my pots get fewer and fewer and fewer um, and gradually they'll work down. I'll end up with my sort of slowest tracing ones left. And then finally what I'll do is I will cover these little fragrance oils up. I'll tend to wrap them in some sort of towel or something and I pop them in my oven to see pop them. What I try and do whenever I'm testing anything is treat it exactly the same as I would do my normal recipe. So for me it's always really important to use my exact recipe that I will typically make a bar of soap with and to treat it in exactly the same way. Quite often people use sort of like cheaper oils as it were to test something. That can work with colorants, that's typically quite fine, but when you're testing fragrance oils it is important that you use the exact recipe because your recipe is quite likely to react differently to somebody else's. So the next day we're going to go and grab our now saponified pots and what I want to do is I want to update my schedule. Can you see I've added a little F here and that's going to be my fragrance. This is going to be the time that I now smell to see whether the fragrance has survived through the saponification. I'll repeat this as well in maybe a month, a couple of months time to see how long it lasts. So I'm just going to grab all those little pots and I'm going to start getting them out of their moulds. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to start having a sniff of them and I'm going to see if there's any scent that remains and whether it's strong, whether it's weak, whether it's disappeared, that sort of thing. And I'm going to note it down on my schedule. Now, as far as scent retention here is, this seems to have been quite a, quite a good batch. As you can see, I've just ticked pretty well most of them, which means there was a nice strong scent after they've saponified. The one I've put W through means that I've, it's just my little sort of weak symbol and that there was some scent there but it was quite difficult to actually detect and I wouldn't be surprised if after a couple of weeks that's actually disappeared. And then to make sure I can identify them, them in the upcoming months, I actually just take, this is just a, an old biro that doesn't work anymore, and I just find it's just as easy to literally just scratch the name in the back of the little sample of soap. And then that way in the future, what I can do is as I go in and check on them, I can look for any discoloration and I can just keep looking and, and sniffing them to see if they're holding their scent and I can just keep my little schedule updated. So overall we can see with those that that was a pretty good batch from the point of view of any discoloration. Um, I did literally just pick oils that said no acceleration, no discoloration. So pretty good on the no discoloration, but certainly no acceleration didn't always work for me as you saw um, in the first part of the testing. And that's why it's so important to test it with your recipe at the temperature that you normally soap at to see what results that you would get. And then lastly, my little samples get put away. Um, I just keep mine in a drawer, um, as you can see here. Here's a drawer of all my fragrance testing samples that I've got. Uh, at this point, yes, if you could zoom in on that, you would be able to see that they are sadly arranged in alphabetical order. 
I do think testing your fragrance oils is really really important um, even if you do have access to reviews um, now I'm in the UK and the amount of reviews we get is really really limited and often the reviews are quite inaccurate so for example this little soap sample that I've got out here um, the one that I've just held up now is my just pure that's how my soap comes out with nothing in it and the one next to it the angel fragrance there that was actually marked up as no discoloration I mean, I don't think you could get much more discoloration than that. So I do think it is really important to make sure that you're testing. Another thing that I find quite interesting is sometimes different fragrances from different suppliers. So, for example, with these ones, this is an example of two black raspberry and vanillas from different suppliers. And the one on the left, you can see, is nice and white. The one on the right has actually coloured. That one on the right did actually accelerate quite quickly as well. So hopefully you found this useful and it may be something that you may start to adopt. As I said, it doesn't have to be a special testing session. You can just literally test a fragrance oil on the back of making a soap that you're already making. If you have found this useful and you like it, then please do give me a thumbs up and maybe considering subscribing so you can then see any other videos that I produce.